Good afternoon. In this video, we will see about video laryngoscopy and intubation. The approach to airway management has undergone a dramatic transformation since the advent of video laryngoscopy. It utilizes video camera technology to visualize the airway structures and facilitate endotracheal intubation. The development of video laryngoscopy started in the late 90s with advances in the camera technology. In 1998, we modified direct laryngoscope by incorporating a fiber optic cable into the Macintosh plate. Archie and Kaplan added the specific TCA camera head with a digital light source for proper image and image acquisition. From 2000 onwards, there has been a plethora of different indirect video laryngoscopes. Though developed in the early 2000s, video laryngoscopes did not gain popularity till the development of better display technologies like LCD by late 2000s. Now let us see about classification of video laryngoscopes. They can be classified into rigid or flexible. In this video, we will be uh, talking mainly about rigid video laryngoscopes. A variety of device classification exists, each with their own advantages and disadvantages. The most commonly used classification is based on the blade. It can be Macintosh blade modification, angulated blades or blades with tube or guide channels. Now let us see about Macintosh modification blades. These video laryngoscopes integrate the video capability into the traditional Macintosh blade. It can be used for both direct or indirect laryngoscopy. This can be used as a tool for teaching airway anatomy. Few examples are C Mac, V Mac, and Macrat Mac. Devices with angulated blades. These incorporate a more angulated curvature into the blade with improves the glottis visualization with minimal patient head flexion and extension. These require matching recurved stylets. Examples Glidescope GBL, Gobalt or Ranger Glidescope, Macrat Series 5. C Mac with D blade. Tube or guided channel video laryngoscopes. These use a guide channel to direct the tube into the glottis. Stylet is not required. Examples are Pentax AWS and AirTrack. Now let us see some general advantages of video laryngoscopy. It is unnecessary to align the laryngeal axis for visualization of the glottis. It gives improved glottic visualization in case of limited mouth opening and neck mobility. It helps in cases of less cervical manipulation, provides possible awake intubation and airway assessment and provides an official record. Now coming to the disadvantages of video laryngoscopy, there may be difficulty in passing the ET tubes despite improved glottic visualization. It may have a variable learning curve. There is a potential chance of weakening of development of direct laryngoscopy skills here. Lack of perception of a difficult airway situation. Obscure view of by fogging and secretions on camera lens. Now we will see the techniques of intubation with different we will see about insider video laryngoscope which is a Macintosh blade modification. First step is to check the battery. Next attach the appropriate size blade. Pre-shape the tip of the endotracheal tube to match the curvature of the tip of the blade with an angle of about 30 to 40 degrees. Position the patient in such a way that the head of the patient is in neutral position and the face of the patient is parallel to the ceiling. Look into the mouth of the patient and insert the laryngoscope in the midline. Gently advance the scope past the uvula till you get a glottic view. Lift the scope gently with the force of 5 to 10 Newton to obtain the best glottic view. Now insert the endotracheal tube perpendicular to the patient's mouth. 
and advances gently till you see the tip of the tube on the screen. Now push the tube into the glottic opening while simultaneously withdrawing the stillet. Now secure the endotracheal tube by inflating the bulb. Real laryngoscopes. First, we will see about Lightscope AWS, which has an angulated blade that helps in easy visualization of glottis. We will just see the steps of intubation with the video laryngoscope. Patient head is placed in a neutral position with the face parallel to the ceiling. There is no need for sniffing position since it is not necessary to directly visualize the glottis. We follow a four step technique. First look in the patient's mouth to introduce the video laryngoscope. Next look at the screen to obtain the best glottic view. Then again look in the patient's mouth to introduce the endotracheal tube. At last look at the screen to intubate the patient. Now we will see each step in detail. The first step is to look into the mouth of the patient to introduce the laryngoscope and advance the scope gently till the base of the tongue. The scope can be introduced in the midline with no displacement of tongue required as in case of conventional direct laryngoscope. Cut the screen and further advance the scope to obtain the best glottic view. We can advance or withdraw the scope in order to obtain this view. It is better if the glottis is positioned in such a way that it occupies the upper third of the screen. This can be achieved by a minimum anterior pull of the scope. Always look at the mouth while inserting the ET tube because it may cause soft tissue damage since it has a rigid stylet in it. Now again look into the mouth of the patient to introduce the endotracheal tube. The endotracheal tube must be pre-shaped with a rigid stylet uh, with a bend of around 35 degrees in the tip to negotiate the curvature of the blade. Advance the endotracheal tube till the tip of the tube is slightly visible on the screen. Now look at the screen again to gently push the endotracheal tube past the glottic opening while simultaneously withdrawing the rigid chiller to minimize the soft tissue injury. Now we will see about CMAC video laryngoscopes. These are similar to that of the traditional Macintosh blades. These can be attached either to an external monitor or can be attached to a pocket monitor. The intubation technique is similar to that of a regular direct laryngoscopy. This is a modification of the CMAC video laryngoscope. It has a D blade or a difficult airway blade which is slightly angulated at the end to improve the visualization of the glottis in case of an anticipated difficult airway. Now let us see about the indications of video laryngoscopy. It can be used in case of difficult airway situations fail conventional laryngoscopy and intubation for diagnostic purpose and for teaching direct laryngoscopy or in uh, video laryngoscopy.
contraindications are a large laryngeal mass obstructing the glottic view or a laryngeal trauma causing cricotracheal separation. There are certain predictors of difficult video laryngoscopy. They are abnormal upper lip bite test, short thyromental distance, presence of a large neck pathology, and highly restricted cervical spine motion. A L Gansori risk certification index score of more than 4 can be used to identify difficult airway. Now we will see the current evidence of use of video laryngoscopy. In an article published in British Medical Journal by Sharon, they have concluded that video laryngoscopy reduces the number of failed attempts, especially in people with difficult airway, but not the complications or time required for intubation. In patients with cervical spine concern, a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials published in British Journal of Anesthesiology on alternate intubation techniques versus Macintosh laryngoscopy concluded that the air track can reduce the risk of intubation failure. In the article published in Canadian Journal of Anesthesiology, they have concluded that video laryngoscopy can be used for awake intubation in morbidly obese patients or as a tool for awake airway assessment. Generally, video laryngoscopy provides a glottic view with serial grade of 1 or 2. But interestingly, in an RCT published by Canadian Journal of Anesthesiology in 2016, they have concluded that significantly faster intubation time with lithoscope video laryngoscopy when deliberately restricted view of larynx is obtained. This is because when we push the laryngoscope deep into the varicular to lift the epiglottis, the angle of insertion of the ET tube is such a way that it may hit the anterior wall of the trachea causing difficulty in advancing the tube. But by deliberately obtaining a poor glottic visualization, it helps to align the axis of the trachea with that of the blade, which helps in easy intubation. During the current pandemic, video laryngoscopy was recommended as a tool for intubation in patients with or suspected COVID-19 disease.